Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at things about mini PCs you should consider before buying. With Christmas coming up, people have got money to burn and they want to buy themselves nice new gadgets. And mini PCs are probably going to be on that list. Now, I've got a mini PC here, which turned out to be quite problematic. It's from Geekom and uh, it's the Mini IT11. And I wanted to show you this because there's a lot of YouTube channels that create content on this sort of stuff. And they leave out a lot of important criteria. So this is exactly what you'd get in a kit if you bought your mini PC. You'd have your mini PC, your HDMI cable, your power adapter, and also uh, you would get your backplate for mounting it on a monitor or on a wall. And this is all okay if you're doing this as a review and you'll normally get titles like the best mini PC or something along those lines. The problem is with a lot of these reviews is they're not actually showing you some of the most important stuff that is important about a mini PC. So let's go through some of these things so you don't make the mistake and end up getting your fingers burnt. And I'll show you exactly how this one performed, which had a major flaw in it. So first thing you want to look at, is it bare bones or is it ready to go? Bare bones means there's going to be uh, no RAM inside and no um, storage drive with Windows on it. So that's really important. A ready to go one is basically going to have everything in there ready to go. And you could just plug it in and use it. Now, of course, ventilation on the side here is important. And also having a good cooling fan. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But I wanted to cover this next bit while we're looking at the actual mini PC. And that is parts and features of the mini PC, which is your connections and your ports. Does it have all of the right connections that you need? because you don't want to be plugging in loads of extensions to get things working because it doesn't have enough ports. Does it have enough USB ports? What speed are they? Does it have enough type C uh, ports? Are they data only? Are they, uh, you know, the right type of type C that you need? HDMI, does it have a DP port and things like that. So these are the things you need to look out for. Okay, so let's get this unit open. Now, one of my biggest gripes with YouTubers is the ones that don't take the time and effort to open it up and have a look inside. And this will give you plenty of good insight to what parts have been used in this mini PC, what the cooling is like, and also what parts have been used, whether they're branded or unknown Chinese parts. It's important because when you're paying a lot of money for these things, it's important that you know uh, whether it's upgradable and what parts they've used. So you have a little chunk of aluminium here with a thermal pad, which is going to go on top of this drive here. Now, make sure what drive it is. This is an Intel drive. So this is an Intel drive, which is Gen 3, not Gen 4, but it can be upgraded to 2 terabytes on this drive. You can also add up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. This is 16 gigabytes of RAM. Is that enough RAM? You need to take that into account because you're going to have to upgrade it, and it's quite expensive. Let's take a look around this area here. You can slot in an SSD inside here as well for extra storage, which will give you uh, more storage on this device. Some of these mini PCs don't allow you to upgrade uh, the drive and put an extra drive in here. So this is quite useful because it will give you more storage on these little mini PCs. You definitely don't want to be seeing surface mounted parts on these uh, mini PCs. If they are, then walk away from them. Don't touch them. Also, uh, branded parts is essential for these mini PCs because the cost of these are pretty expensive. This one alone is on sale and it's quite expensive still. Let me give you the price and so you can get an understanding of how much this costs. This is at the moment £559. Normal price is £879, which is quite a big difference. And this does have an i7-1195G7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. So you can see here, once you put this all back together, uh, it is a quite a nice compact little mini PC. The next important thing that you need to take into account, and this is essential because these mini PCs can get a little bit hot, and it's important that the actual mini PC that you're going to be buying has good thermals. And I always test and do thorough testing of all my products when I review them, whereas a lot of YouTubers are not going to give you this sort of information. But, you know, it's important because I don't want someone going out, buying a, a mini PC on my say-so of getting it out of a box and just looking at it and not showing you what it actually does. Let's take a look at one of the pitfalls of mini PCs. And this one in particular 
which is uh, quite bad. You can see already with just doing Geekbench, we're getting uh, core temps going up to 99C. Now we're also we're getting the core distance to TJ Max, which is 1C, which is not good. We're getting core thermal throttling, yes. We're also getting a bunch of other things happening, and this is just running Geekbench. Now you may be thinking, hold on a second, you are benchmarking it, it should get pretty hot. So when you see the package ring thermal throttling and it's saying, yes, we know it's thermal throttling and it's literally slowing down that CPU. So you're going to have an impact on your performance. Now, we're only doing Geekbench here and it shouldn't really get to the red line that instant like that. And this is all to do with cooling and trying to get heat out of the actual mini PC. Now, this is important because many PCs are going to get a little bit hot because they're in a, a small confined space, but you don't want them redlining so quickly like that. So let me, what I'll do is I'll get a benchmark here and we'll take a look. I want you to also reset the clock and I'm going to install GIMP. Now we're just installing a program and this is when I knew that this uh, little box of tricks here is not great because you shouldn't be seeing any sort of red line or thermal throttling while installing a program. But unfortunately for this mini PC, it did. And I'm looking at it right here. You can see now we're getting the core distance to TJ Maxx is four Celsius in the red. We're also getting major heat coming through the chip here. And if you kept using it, it's not gonna last long. If you kept using this Core Max 99 Celsius, that is super hot. Now, if you continue to use a mini PC when you're getting this sort of issues at this sort of early stages by just installing software, it's not going to last you very long. And it's important that you understand that if you're not seeing this type of stuff in a review, then you're going to be buying a mini PC uh, basically blind and you won't know exactly what you're buying. And unfortunately, that takes me on to another key problem, which is the warranty. Where do you send? your warranty. If they're in China, you've now got to deal with someone in China. It's going to be a lot more harder for you to, uh, you know, get your warranty sorted. If it's someone on Amazon, you can send it back next day and no problems, no quibble. You can send it back and get your money back. Not an issue. But when you're talking about China, big difference. Uh, so be careful when you're looking for a mini PC, because if they're not showing this sort of stuff on their channel, then they're misleading you. So it's important to look for cooling. Cooling is probably the number one you should be looking for on these little mini PCs because they will get a little bit hot, but you don't want them uh, sort of going into the red like this and thermal throttling while you're installing programs. And that's usability. This is not usable. If you started doing this on a regular basis, it's not going to last that long. Now, I did actually see one YouTuber uh, on YouTube and he does review stuff and he does actually talk about the thermal throttling issues with this particular product. So it's not just me that's had this issue, but he didn't go into much detail. But really, at the end of the day, it's important that as an influencer and as a YouTuber, if you are showing products on your channel, you should be being as honest as possible and showing as much information as possible rather than just opening it up and getting it out of the box and reading off the off the website. Now, you may be thinking you might be able to fix this and going into the BIOS and undervolting and things like that. Unfortunately, uh, most of these mini PCs, the BIOSes are locked and you're not going to be able to tamper with some of the settings to bring these settings down. Although you shouldn't have to do this when you're buying a mini PC, sometimes you might be able to go into the BIOS and you can play with the multiplier, you can play with the voltage and things like that. And obviously this will help. So you're looking for power settings. Unfortunately, in this BIOS, there's not much you can do here, and it's pretty much locked out. And uh, you, that leaves you in a, a difficult position where, obviously, you're now going to have a mini PC that is not functioning the way it is. Now, of course, remember, when you start making changes to lower the temperatures or lower the voltage, it will impact your scores. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to be impacting your score at all too much. So the whole idea of uh, actually getting this done is to make sure that you get it done just enough so it brings the temperatures down and makes it more stable, but you don't lose too much performance. Otherwise, you may as well just go and buy 
a cheaper mini PC with lower specs. So you can look at, say, throttle stop and uh, try to see here. Now, when you put a check mark into the speed shift EPP and you've got also disable turbo here, you can do that, but it really does impact performance. It drops from, say, a score of 1500 on the CPU down to 500, which literally, uh, you know, kills performance. So you can't use disable turbo because it really will impact it. I tried to mess around with the speed shift and that didn't work either. I did find a solution to the problem. If you want to see a video on throttle stop and how to manage thermal throttling and things like that, let me know in the comments section below and I'll show you the solution I used for this particular unit itself. Now, again, uh, like I said, that's going to be a separate video. Let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to make that video for you. But if you look into the settings here, unlock adjustable voltage you can't put a check mark in there it's not going to allow you to do that it's locked out and you can't go to it's set to adaptive it won't allow you to use the uh the actual slider here you can see it won't let you do it you can't put a, an offset of voltage in here as well like minus 100 millivolts that would have helped a little bit but you can't do it on here some uh, machines you can and some machines you can't on this one you can't so it, it, that's locked out so you're going to have to do another solution and I'll show you in another video if you want to how I got around this and actually, you know, eradicated the thermal throttling altogether. And that comes to another thing with these particular units, uh, which are coming from China and places like that. The quality control on some of these units is pretty poor. So this mini PC should have probably never left the factory without it being tested because obviously thermal throttling of that magnitude is pretty bad. So when you're using throttle stop, you can mess around with some of the settings. There's no guarantee that it's going to work, but you may be able to get it. So the thermal throttling stops and you don't you lose a lot of performance, if any. And that's what the main goal is. But it's going to take a bit of time with different sort of units. It does take a bit of time to get the right settings for each individual mini PC. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Sorry, it's been a long one. I needed to cover a lot of points here. To make sure that you understand the difficulties when buying a mini PC and some of the pitfalls that you can fall into when buying them. So if you're watching reviews on mini PCs, just make sure they are being honest and they are covering all of the bases to give you the right information before you pull the trigger on something so expensive like a mini PC because they're not cheap. And the last thing you want to do is buy a lemon and it's really super high thermal throttling uh, right out of the box. You don't want that at all. Anyway, but as said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope you found this video some sort of use. If you did, then leave a comment. Also, give the video a thumbs up, and uh, I shall catch you in the very next video. Before I go, I just want to say a quick shout-out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I do appreciate the support, and I shall see you again real soon or on the Discord server. Bye for now.